Ian Connor is on the social media these days, complaining somewhat, flexing a little bit, and just talking quite openly about cancel culture. And I'm not really too sure why, what kind of spurned it. It might be because of that weird kind of back and forth that he's kind of going with um, people from OVO because he decided to kind of jump in and decide to kind of back up Ye because I think Drake released that record where it basically features a skit from Kim Kardashian talking about the moment she decided to divorce Kanye. He put it in a track. A lot of people are kind of reading into it that they're not cool anymore, Ye and Drake. And I guess Ian Connor wanted to kind of get involved by basically saying, hey, I'm going to side with Ye because that's my guy. Because, you know, he was working with him closely on that um, brand that never came out at the end of the day which i think was what was it called again i forgot it was something to do with insulting tremaine right i forgot what the idea behind it was but they made a line sheet of it with all these kind of like supreme kind of flips on stuff that he did basically poking fun at tremaine emery and then people kind of understood oh yeah and flipping ian connor are working quite closely together maybe he's kind of his consult creative consultant and he decided to kind of throw his name in there and say hey i'm rocking with yay and this is a kind of um, an image that basically shows what happened, courtesy of Hype Never Dies. It says Ian Connor blocks Drake and says it's war. Um, and then over your chubs got involved. And you see here an image, I think, basically of chubs, um, one of um, Drake's right hand men saying, little boy, we, we've been whipped on you. Stay calm before we get active basically explaining that maybe in the past OVO gang may have kind of you know put the beats on flipping Ian Connor back in the day and then you're seeing here screenshots of Ian Connor taking a screenshot of him blocking Drake even though they're friends on social media because he decided to have Ye's back and Ye decides here on the Texas you've no rules in war thank you you've given me good advice I guess him talking to Kanye in person or the text about what's going on with their with its ongoing beef with flipping um, Drake so off the back of that ian connor's been on his social media you know blow vating and just hyping himself up and then being a little bit sorry for himself over the whole cancer culture thing because there was a point in time where ian connor had like over was it 21 i think now it's up to maybe 33 rape allegations on his jacket and that may have contributed overall to his kind of steam you know um, he's kind of hype train grinding to some sort of relative halt and him basically having to get it out the mud and become a little bit more independent and do his own thing outside of the kind of commercial public sort of normy way that he was kind of about to go down because for a period of time it felt like his star was kind of rising over time he was kind of more popular he was getting a lot more mainstream collabs and then obviously when all those allegations came out all those girls saying he might have raped them eventually that whole thing came screaming to a halt but he's been a bit of a tear on social media as you can see um via his tweets here he says i see the influence here he's posting here another person posted and ian connor retweeted um, ian connor is such an interesting case study he's single-handedly proven that can being cancelled isn't really a thing he then tweets i realize these rap niggas dress worse than than i've uh, ever nowadays another one he says i did advise some of your niggas to settle down and have a family life is deeper than twitter um another one he says here i understood da, da, da. he says touch grass people tell him to touch grass he's posting a picture here lying down next to money um another one says here not true at all but most of the time agreeable because people tend to take the easy way out again he talks like a five-year-old sometimes another one here he's um there's a post here featuring daniel caesar finally bowing to the pressures of cancel culture and apologizing for standing up for the s jewels when she was becoming the whipping boy of social because it feels like every moment there's a person on twitter who basically everyone attacks and bullies and i guess for a period in time yes jules was the person maybe she brought it upon herself i don't really know but i just remember was a period in time where everybody was basically on her flipping neck and for some reason daniel c decided to step stand up for her because they were friends at the time um he kind of paid the ultimate price of his career it felt like even though yes Jules didn't come out and really you know publicly defend him in any kind of way and he kind of suffered for it just for standing up for his friend and then now he's apologizing i don't know what for years later but whatever and um, in kind of tweeted on that video and said i hate that y'all even made him believe cancer culture even exists and now he's apologizing for standing up for someone nigga needs to spend the summer with yay for character development he says here in a tweet if cancer culture was a real thing then why am i still able to do exactly what i whatever i want go where i want and have been been most financially up and stable than ever i've been in my life did i allow that or y'all allowed that 
which is an interesting question because I think what's happened, and I've always said this, right, is that I think counterculture by and large is kind of crap, but I also understand its necessity in culture. In society nowadays, actually, overall, especially when you look into the you know into the amount of um cases that get brought to court that involve like sexual assault or rape and stuff the numbers are really frighteningly low so a lot of these women or a lot of these people who are in these circumstances in these situations where they may have been abused or assaulted maybe they don't have any way to seek justice in the courts so the only way they can kind of get some type of retribution and feel that somehow justice has been done is by cancelling and having the ability to maybe stop the money stop the flow stop the hype train and just kind of you know disrupt and publicly shame a person who is quite widely known for whatever they may have done to them in the past so that's where i feel like maybe cancer culture has some level of utility where you can't get the justice you want in the courts so you get it in a court of public opinion you contribute to an op-ed you lend some quotes to an article you may provide evidence of what that may, person may have done to you in the past and then maybe they get you know asked for a comment from the journalist they don't comment wherever it may be but you get to kind of get some justice back in the core public opinion it's a bit weird because if you actually have had a crime against you some people would argue you should go to the courts first but in some cases you know the statute of limitations is up you probably aren't able to prosecute if you don't have some bits of evidence over time it can be a he said she said issue it gets really hard to prove these things overall so i understand why counsel culture exists it gets abused when people start to do retroactive counsel culture or just throw out allegations with no substance behind it and just in the hopes of you know di you know um, throwing somebody off who they maybe don't like anymore and we saw that happening with that i've got that asian comic who went on a what you would imagine was a bad date um for both parties and then the lady that had you know that he went on a date with decided to write an op-ed i think on a site called punjabi or something essentially talking about the bad date but in a way it kind of made him seem sound like a predator which he wasn't and it kind of essentially cancelled him for a short period of time now counterculture doesn't exist if you've got your own fan base as we've seen with a lot of these people chris lear being the main example of it and maybe brian callan those comedians because if you've got your own community of fans and you're not beholden by a network, a big platform, just an employer overall, you can essentially have your fans support you, whether it's through Patreon, whether it's for YouTube, tips and donations, whether it's from you making your own brand, whatever it may be, your fans can directly support you if if that happens and you never get cancelled. So if you have your own fan base, you can never get cancelled. So essentially not getting cancelled isn't actually proof that you didn't do nothing wrong that's basically what i'm trying to get at it's kind of just showing you that we now live in society where you can kind of get away with absolute murder if you want to like if you're if you're well liked enough i'm sure if there was somebody liked enough well out there and they committed a murder they went to prison for it came back out inside the podcast everyone listened to it and they get loads of money so the idea that you don't get cancelled shows that you weren't guilty of what you you had been accused of is a bit crazy. But then you think about the actual allegations around him, right? And you look back at some of the articles and they're a bit crazy, a bit racy. But then I think to myself, like at a certain point in time, what's he meant to do really? If none of these allegations have been proven in a court of law he hasn't been charged in any way shape or form even if they are crazy amounts yeah i think back to the flipping no clark interview that i was talking about in zz mills what should you do if that's if, if you're if that's the case should you just you know have your head down and be thankful you're alive and not be out here flaunting and doing what he's doing and living his life and being kind of showy and enjoying himself or should you be hiding if that's the case what should you do I'm not too sure, but let me just quickly read read, read some of these articles from the past that kind of detail some of these allegations. And this is courtesy of um, Complex. It feels like Complex have a lot of these articles talking about Ian Connor. I already found like three. So it looks like they were really going above and beyond to make sure that he kind of got cancelled. So maybe they are enemies of the of the sicko general out here. But it's his title it says Ian Connor allegations resurface in new report. It says here, a Paris Fashion Week well underway and dominating headlines. The debate surrounding the continued presence of Ian Connor has been revived with an article including comments by Jen, Dier, Jen Dirks um, in a two-piece business of fashion titled Why Hasn't Me Too Come After Ian Connor? Writer Tamisha O'Connor funny compares connor's current career fallout that faced other fashion figures such as cherry richardson who has roundly condemned in recent years by multiple brands um 
nothing has happened says duh um just as as recently he's been more and more put in the media and pop culture he's kind of found his way back into being socially accepted as cited in the piece connor has indeed made front row appearances at recent shows for virgil abloh and others international mag numero dubbed him an it boy just this month looking back though who accused, accused connor of rape in 2016 and tumblr post says he was persuaded she was persuaded sorry to um she was persuaded by an entertainment lawyer at the time of the alleged incident to decline pursuing charges or, or going to the press this is not in this is not the intention i want she said it's just it's, it's it's way i don't speak on this oh my god this writing is horrible this is this is attention not the attention i want it's why i don't speak on this situation Connor has been accused by numerous women of sexual assault and misconduct, including Jenny Stapley, Tyrin Williams, Malika Anderson, and Kadita Dalio, a woman going by the name of Alisa, who has chosen to remain anonymous, and multiple more women. Oh my God. In tweets and interviews, he has denied allegations. Collaborators and friends, including Asa Brocky, Kanye, and Kanye West, and Ablo, did not contribute comments to the business of fashion story. Read a full piece here and obviously we've got a comment here from chris black a co-host of how long gone one of my favorite podcasts out there who said at the time i don't understand why these guys continue to stand with Ian connor fuck him so a lot of people in the industry don't like the guy but clearly his fans don't give a fuck and despite all the constant allegations around his name he's still been able to strive and succeed and do what the fuck he wants now going on these allegations and actually talking about them specifically right let's go over some of these because i forgot something i wanted to kind of give a bit of a refresh this is courtesy of, of complex the article title is ian connor faces rape accusations from two more women two more which is two more than anyone actually needs it says two women came forward on friday accused of celebrity stylist ian connor at the time um uh, to a report in the daily mail jenny stampley a 19 year old from chicago told the mail she was attacked by connor during a visit in toronto in april in the same story tyrene williams a 23 year old from redfields redlands california claimed that she was raped by the stylist in 2014 so someone saying they got attacked someone saying they got raped pretty racy pretty scary and pretty up there comments kadira sorry kadieta dalio Dialio, I guess, Dialio, um, which the Daily Mail also spells as Kadita Diallo, um, came forward in her story on Wednesday, joining Malika Anderson and John Dio, um, as who made their accusations in April. Dalio's allegations prompted Connor to go to a long Twitter rant Wednesday evening, and another anonymous woman accused Connor of rape on Thursday, according to the Daily Mail. William's story, as reported to the Mail, is similar to the ones who told by other alleged victims. She claims Connor contacted her through social media, was friendly in online interactions, but then raped her when they met in person. We spoke for a while, just texting back and forth, and he seemed like an okay guy. He never talked about anything sexual, he never asked me for photos, and he didn't even comment on my appearance to Daily Mail. Williams, a student at the Fashion Industry of Design and Marketing in Los Angeles, eventually agreed to meet with Connor because of their shared interest in fashion. Connor allegedly took Williams back to his apartment and attacked her. God almighty. He tried to put his face down near my vagina. <laughs> okay. I pushed him with my feet really hard and said, don't, just don't. Um, it was at this point he grabbed my lower back, pulled me to him and put his penis inside me. I pushed him out again and I said, please no, stop this isn't what i wanted and you said this wasn't what you wanted why are you lying according to williams account in the mail after connor discovered she planned to tell the story to the reporters he threatened her with legal actions via text so this is the text he says you're sickening you really went to report her, said i raped you funny thing is the videos i have of you say otherwise what and so do the text reasons i'll be suing you for everything you have as soon as the story hits tomorrow pray that i you have a good lawyer because i'll be getting everything stampley claims that in the same daily mail report she was also approached by connor over social media she said connor offered her to fly her to new york and became angry and she refused um, not wanting to cause any hard feelings stampley said that she relented after connor offered to fly her to toronto upon her arrival however stampley said that there was no separate room and that connor began pressuring her to get into bed with him almost immediately i was like okay i'll go into bed with him i was like no i don't want to have sex then he got behind me and held my waist down him held my waist from behind i asked him to move but he said no and kept telling me to relax i thought if i say no he's not going to do anything i never met anybody said no and had them just keep going i was sure he wasn't going to do anything also so i just stopped moving 
Then I saw him out of the corner of my eye taking off my pants or maybe his boxers and he noticed I'd seen him and turned me back around. So I said, no, I'm not going to have sex. And he told me, relax again. I could hear he was getting a little mad. I was getting louder and he said, you need to stop. So I stopped moving. Simply came that she later moved to the couch to sleep because she had nowhere else to go. I didn't have anywhere else to go. He was paying for the flight and he only bought me a one-way ticket. So I had to wait until I bought the other ticket, until he bought the other ticket. Stampley said that Connor pressured her to have sex again the next day and FaceTimed with someone during it. Fucking hell. Afterwards, Stampley said she asked Connor to let her go home. I woke up and Ian told... I work, I work Ian and told him I needed to ride to the airport ian he was mad he he had an attitude so he was like well you can't get well can't you get it i was like okay i'll get it if you want me to get it because i'm not having sex with you anymore that's fine i called uber got myself an uber then just went to the airport and went home he definitely doesn't have respect for women he'll be a nice person but when it comes to sex he's mad he has no respect at all connor seemed to address further allegation in a tweet he said i should never be punished with lies so he categorically denies it but he so far hasn't provided any proof to counter these claims in this text exchange here from that time he said he has videos and texts that prove that their interaction with that lady who's featured in here was consensual that's what he's saying but everyone else is saying it's not now in the same way that i said about that no clock thing you can't have more than 20 women accused of this sort of stuff and not have some level of truth to it to me it just sounds unfathomable that that would be the thing but i know that also is possible but the issue comes in the interim if you haven't been charged and you haven't been in court for it or any way shape or form and it's just people saying things about you online should you keep your head down and live a somewhat modest life and chill or should you be on the internet still flexing and you know and kind of stunting everybody because it feels like now that's what he's basically doing he's kind of flaunting to everybody hey cancer code doesn't exist i'm up i think he's got a tweet here that says 100 bands why are you troll tweeting i hope you realize that's a number you'll never have at once um why are you troll tweeting can you have take care of your family get your priorities together another tweet here says um you're acting like a cancel culture real when the allegations alone don't do anything to your career. He says, better it. I made more money standing on my own two feet than ever being employed for years and years by someone who's paying me month per month, the equivalence of days worth of shopping for me nowadays. Maybe I can't be on the scene as much as I once was, but I'm in it for the money. So he was in it for the scene for before, but now because he doesn't have any option, he's obviously in it for the money also. But like I'm saying, what should someone do if you've been accused of these things? You don't get charged in a court of law. Should you be, you know, should you be somewhat timid about it and chill? Or should you be stunting on everybody like this? But I feel like with Ian Connor, the issue that I have with him is that he wants, he wants it all. He wants to be able to have, say counterculture doesn't exist. I'm successful for it. He also wants to kind of do what he wants to a certain extent because this whole infatuation he has with Osama bin Laden kind of feels like that, right? Where he says, oh, he kind of stood for something. And even though he had bad, you know, he went about it the bad way, he got his message across type of thing. So he kind of likes being the heel. He kind of likes playing the bad guy. And if that's the case, I don't understand why he's complaining that some people don't like how he's perceived online or I don't see why he's complaining that some people who don't maybe care about him too much or the allegations just believe the allegations. If you're up, if you're able to make money and if your career hasn't suffered so much, why are you bothered about what people that don't like you have to say? Because the people that are commenting that they don't like the guy are never going to buy sicko. They don't care about Bol Bol. They don't care about his recommendations about music. They don't think he's a style icon in any way, shape or form. They don't give a fuck about him and don't know him. But he still wants to convince the world that what, he's a good guy, that nothing wrong, all this malarkey. It's just a strange way to go about it. Because I feel like if you've kind of won, which he's saying he has, why aren't you happy that you've won? Why are you still trying to stunt? And maybe that is the whole purpose of this. Maybe deep down, he maybe isn't happy. Maybe deep down, he's kind of suffering because no matter how much money he makes, everyone's still going to be tweeting under his tweets, 33 or whatever they do, in terms of the number of rape accusers. He still knows everyone looks at him as a rapist. He still knows he can't hang about with certain people or be pictured with them because people are going to immediately kind of bombard those people with flipping comments in there, flipping, you know, with flipping, you know, ba very bad comments relating to him and saying, why are you hanging out with this type of dude? Um, we only saw what the damage that Corday 
you know, throwaway comment said about him and revenge storms and stuff and saying, oh, they're rapist shoes and shit. So clearly he has, you know, he doesn't have a good vi- image out there. But he's trying his best to kind of recover it. And now he looks like he's kind of trying to angle for an interview that he wants to do. Um, the number tweet here says, y'all in niggas hate me so bad, but feel everything I do and say. Y'all revealing your hands and showing y'all a bunch of dick dappers in real life. So let me see here. There's a t- quote here where he's basically saying he wants to have um, an interview. Another one here says, why would I be mad? I'm not getting stranger validation for or embrace my people. I never see or meet in real life. LMAO, y'all reveal how pussy and unloved y'all are in real time each tweet. Another one says, imagine me wanting internet validation. I want internet money, but the opinions and, accept and acceptance I can care less for for real. But that maybe is part of the issue. You can't get one about the other. If you get internet money, you're going to be subjected to, you know, opinions and people's acceptance or lack thereof. You would imagine so. Anyway, let's continue here and let's see if I can find the one about him talking about the interview. He wants to do an interview with somebody. Niggas bringing up Connor. Doing Connor kind of bring up niggas. Skill of social disability. Cartoon Abby. Fuck our generation music. Yeah, so fuck it. Our generation music interview. Two parts, but I get full creative control. So he's been talking to Akeem here talking about he wants to do an interview with him after Akeem did that pretty good interview with ASAP Bari that was pretty well received I thought so clearly that's what he wants to set up and then he mentions Joe Budden oddly enough that he went to have an interview with but Joe Budden I guess maybe turned him down or didn't maybe follow up in terms of getting an interview with him which is hilarious considering Joe Budden's own history um, you know with um, with abuse and whatnot I guess he just didn't want to have that you know cocktail of abusers on the pod talking about what they're talking about that looks kind of nasty so this interview is what he says here says funny thing is I wanted an interview with Joe Budden interview because I was 30 years old and and, and all but he's a no let's say go again he's writing is horrible and he does his capitalized thing which is flipping annoying as hell to read it says funny thing is i wanted a joe Biden interview because i'm 30 years old and all but he's a bitch i hate culturally political people because in my eyes the whole point of culture is a natural feeling despite the pros and cons of a matter but niggas confuse that with strategics I don't know. Personally, I think he's kind of low IQ, but very, very talented and gifted in his field of creativity, consulting, and just having good taste. Um, But when it comes to, you know, being able to formulate his opinions, ideas, and whatnot, um, and kind of be somewhat eloquent, it's not there. So this interview that he's kind of angling for may do more harm than good because he's going to have to sit there, I guess, and try to explain himself you know, regarding some of these allegations, that's the thing he's going to have to do. You would imagine, right? Like, how do you explain away some of these flipping articles? How do you make them make sense when some of them have been, you know, journalistically vetted? People have been kind of, you know, followed up on in terms of certain things. Like, how do you counteract over 21 people saying that you have assaulted them in some sort of way? Like, how do you do that? How do you make that make sense? Especially when you're not as well-spoken as some people and you maybe come across a little bit dim outside of only creating amazing work. I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know how he's going to do it. He wants to do it. I think it's going to be, I think personally it's a bad idea. It'll probably do more harm than bad for him. Unless in the period of time we haven't heard him speak, he's been doing reading. He's been getting smarter. He's been getting wiser. He's been formulating his opinion and what he's going to say way more away from the cameras, outside of the glare of the public. I don't know, but it'll be interesting to see how he approaches it. And if it goes tits up, like I'm assuming it will go tits up. I'm interested to see how the people around him who are still kind of, somewhat co-signing him react to it the likes of the drakes who's got a sicko tattoo the likes of rocky who still hangs with him and still kind of co signs him and a few other people out there like how do you react to that after the fact because i know the only person i've seen so far who's publicly disavowed him was maybe like denim tears right the tremaine emery guy apart from that i've not seen anybody else in the scene who's really gone out their way to kind of say this guy's you know fuck this guy and shit because i guess he's still somewhat seen adjacent somewhat still has a little bit of clout on his name and people don't want to kind of tarnish that relationship so he wants an interview he wants to sit down our generation music and hakeem and kind of sell his story and say that he's innocent but i think it's going to end up terribly for him but again what do i know what do i know <laughs>